I kind of knew when I was on the plane. Just something felt different. We kind of came through the clouds, it was late at night, and I didn't see any lights. So I knew I was kind of in the middle of nowhere. But something felt very peaceful and exciting. Uh, never in a million years did I think I'd be living here. I didn't have a home, which is not uncommon for a theater artist. I didn't have a place in Chicago anymore. I was sort of a vagabond. I saw in the trade paper that this company called Theater Squared in Arkansas was doing a play called The Fall of the House based on Edgar Allan Poe's Fall of the House of Usher. And so I went in and auditioned uh, and um, ended up landing the gig. And I sort of fell in love with Fayetteville. I called it the Holy Grail of the United States. <laughs> And I come here for the free beer. I don't know what I'm doing here. You know, Arkansas is known for storytelling, so it's a natural flow for us. We've had some uh, interesting characters in the very colorful politicians that have come out of this city. And I know now better than four. I don't know love what I'm looking for. Well, Federal Arkansas is a very unique place. We are known as the Athens of the Ozarks. We're a very open, free, progressive city. It's been around since 1829, so uh, as they say, we've been around the block. In the last nine years since I've been in office, the arts has really been one of the driving forces in this city. I sit on the United States Conference of Mayors Arts Council, so we know that the arts is uh, the third leading economic driver in a city or in the nation, and we've seen uh, the rewards from that. I came from a, a what would be considered a low-income family, but I got to come over here and experience the theater, and it has been a lasting change on my life. I came over here to see it. Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey Into Night was the first play I saw. It used to be that the main place for entertainment was either a movie or if something was brought in at the university. And people always paid attention to everybody's calendars so there'd be no overlap. You could do everything there was. But now there's so much overlap that there's just no possibility. Those people who think it's gotten too busy, too frantic, too trafficy, but it really isn't because if you're not growing, you're dying. We've had community theater for a long time, but the level of quality and expectation, it has just set the bar so much higher. We see plays now just a year or two after they've won awards on Broadway or off-Broadway, thought-provoking uh, plays that give us a new perspective on the people around us and the life that we live. It's changed the whole tenor of the town. First of all, first of all, does Northwest Arkansas love new plays? Yeah. The Arkansas New Play Festival is something that Theater Square sponsors once a year. They will do staged readings and workshops in between, and if you see them the first weekend and then the last weekend, there's usually a significant change. You're watching a, a play in its process, which is really fascinating, a peek behind the scenes. Make sure that you walk around the whole island. That way, you can feed your spirit and your soul. And who knows? You might get inspired. <laughs> so, write down everything and go to the dance hall. And don't forget to write. You said you write, right? Write. 
You should use this. <laughs> it is for you. It is an ukulele, meaning jumping flea. Uh, thank you, talking lobster. Several years ago, we started housing actors. It's been a real eye-opener. We've learned about a way of life that we had no idea about. The first thing you learn is that if you work in theater, that's not the job that makes you your money. But they thrive on it, and they study so much. It's a hard life in some ways. It would be for me. Tessie. You're talking about Connor O'Shea. What do you know of Connor O'Shea? There is a problem, indeed, and it's not a wee one because Mr. Connor O'Shea is in fact long dead. Yes. As a proverbial coffin nail he is. There's some kind of a strange attitude out there that actors are bums, I guess, but they're not. They just, they work all the time. They study their parts. They study about the people that they're portraying, the history of the time period of their play. They work really hard and long hours. I think that was the first big takeaway I had. They have such varied interests. Um, I expect we've had someone with an interest in almost anything since we started keeping people, and we've kept up with a lot of people, too. Knock, knock. There you are. Hey, hey. how are you? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> it's good to see you. Always good to see you. What have you been up to? Uh, oh, mostly working in the garden. How about you? Rehearsals. Rehearsals. Yeah. Rehearsals. How about a beer? Yeah, please. Got it? Next time, if it's later and not so warm in the we day, we can sit out on the new deck. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. It's one of Doyle's masterpieces. Did you go see Transatlantic last night? I did. How was I it? did. It was good. I think it's improved a lot since two years ago. Did you see it two years ago when it was it was just a reading? I, I didn't. I, was, I wasn't in town. Oh, that's right. You were in Tulsa. I'll be interested to talk about it with you after you see it. So which one are you in? Uh, visible from four states. The gist of the play is it deals a lot with the death penalty, mm -hmm. um, which of course is topical here. Yes. And um, along with that, uh, there's this promontory that this older gentleman owns and people are vying for it. Telephone company wants to, you know, um, own it so they can put a tower up there. And then my character is the preacher who wants to uh, put a big cross up there, like cross church and suck people in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's for the death penalty, so that pulls it That's all right. together. That's yeah, right. He is. Uh, he is yeah. for the death penalty. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. They knew that they were interested in the play, but because of what just happened here mm -hmm. um, with those, those prisoners that they really, mm -hmm. really wanted to have it in the festival. I'm really interested to hear what people have to say about it. I think there are a lot of people who will be in the audience who were quite involved in mm. uh, fighting the executions that took place. Yeah. Didn't do a lot of good, but... I said, you know, I really appreciate you addressing the, the death penalty. Yeah. Yeah, that's very timely. <laughs> Nobody has said that they didn't do bad things, but it, that seems like one more bad thing. Mm -hmm. Northwest Arkansas has sort of exceeded my expectations. We just finished our fourth year living in Fayetteville. And for me, it's been an easy transition. When we were walking into the theater yesterday, one of the directors that I consider a dear friend now said, and in introducing us was, you know, these are our, our friends in the poet, in the writing world. And I'm actually new to going to theater. I was a first generation college graduate um, 
theater wasn't something that was in my my vision. And so only recently, actually, am I do I consider myself a regular theater goer. My wife teaches in 19th century literature and primarily does adaptation studies. So she's really been my bridge to theater. I'm kind of her, her sidekick, <laughs> tagging along and in increasingly becoming comfortable. I really value the opportunity to talk about art across mediums and across disciplines. And when I go back to my own work, I have new language and new experiences to inform how I might work out a poem on a page. It was something that I just got increasingly interested in in graduate school. And it's actually now, you know, something that we do on a regular basis. We quickly found like-minded people um, who were really interested or who are really interested in building community and making sure that people feel at home here. It's built around having a strong theater presence and a strong commitment to the arts across the board. What I think is really interesting about this particular festival is that you actually get to see a work in progress and you actually get to see the process of feedback. If you don't have that talk back and you don't have that Q&A afterwards, I mean, you know how you felt about it, but you don't know how everyone around you felt about the performance. There's so much opportunity for dialogue that you wouldn't otherwise get with, you know, a full kind of polished performance. Pastor's making his case just fine, pacing up and down, elucidating how I'm going to reap all kinds of benefits. Is he talking earthly benefits? Yeah, what's a good book have to say about them, Joanna? <laughs> I just stick to the highlights. You know, he don't seem to mind it out there. He's got plenty of steam left. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was so gung-ho about something. What do you need the money for, anyhow? Well, everybody has needs, Joanna. Thought you didn't have any. Maybe I'll come pray on it in church. You? It's been really wonderful to watch the community receive and welcome to have difficult conversations. And not only having conversations with, with like-minded um, speakers and audiences. When you're sitting there watching a play present values and present um, narratives for you, like you're, you're kind of forced to sit there quietly and listen, and I think listening is, is something that the theater um, experience forces upon the audience members, and I think we all could benefit from some, some healthy listening. It was the day you're 12 years old that I set out on my own. Now I'm just searching for the love that I couldn't find at home. I tried to tell my story, but they wouldn't listen, for I was just a kid, so left with only two bad choices. I came out as a playwright in 1994 as a result of coming out to a new play retreat. And I noticed when we did our stage readings uh, that the house was packed. Uh, there were 150 people out to see a brand new play in progress by a completely unknown playwright. And uh, coming from New York, I was amazed. And that was the first clue that uh, there was, this was territory um, that was ripe for a professional theater. We have a fantastic relationship with our community. They love the kind of theater that we love and they want that. Our festival, which is now in its ninth year, has grown along with the theater to the point where this community has completely embraced the idea of building a new theater. When I came to the theater, we did not own a computer or a stapler. We had 80 subscribers. They were in a very thin binder. Um, and we, you know, we're very happy to have them. You know, now we have uh, you know, 1,500 subscribers and more than one computer, and it's, it's a really exciting trajectory to have traced. It still feels like a dream, absolutely. And Mayor Jordan is a big part of the reason why it can become a physically built concrete reality. This is the next frontier of the American theater, is communities like Northwest Arkansas. So many cities have developed this healthy, replete theater landscape, you know, working in Chicago, 
Um, everyone talked about how there's more than 200 theater companies, 500, 600, it's amazing. But in places like this, where you know, it is the definition of underserved, it's people who would love theater, who have moved from communities like Chicago, who valued it as a part of their lives, and who just don't have that opportunity because the cost of living is so good, because the uh, community support is so strong, uh, that it means that these are the next strongholds of American theater. Break a leg, you guys. There's See you out there. Are. Were you at the um, Dramas Live? Yeah. Thing? yeah, yeah. That was interesting, right? I thought it was interesting, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have any other way of knowing how you all operate. During the opening season, I would love to see my father's war again. That's the best play. I, in my humble opinion, that's my favorite play. I don't know if it's the best, but it's my favorite would, play. I would, I would love to do it again. Too. My husband and I went to the very first one that Theatre Squared produced uh, about 11 years ago. And we haven't missed very many since then. And now I'm on the board of the theater. One day we were at an event, and I said to the managing director, when are you going to ask me to be on the board? And he got this really weird look on his face and he says, actually, now. So I said, yes, and I will stay until they throw me off. It is one of the most interesting things I've ever done. Our commander said, which one of your recruiters told you you weren't going to Iraq? They fucking lied to you. You're all going to the sandbox. You're going to meet Haji. The kids freaked out. They all looked up to me, those kids. They were 17 years old, being trained to kill people. Some of these idiots are so remedial, they can't be helped. <laughs> Look, people who join at a time of war, it's, it's people who aren't doing well at economic prosperity. These aren't the best and the brightest. Depends on where you are. Sir. Sure. I'm sure if I kept going, I'd hit some road scholars along the way. Seeing the thing in progress actually tells you a lot of, of information that's very exciting. I'm not always in the summer here, mm -hmm. but if I'm here in the summer, I'm always checking out way in advance mm -hmm. that I want to go to this uh, festival. I think that the fact that you can have the directors be there, negotiate, mm -hmm. talk about what their writing is, as a writer, as a, even a, a critic, it, it's really special and important. One of the best things that the, the Theatre Square provides. I don't think I've ever been to a mediocre performance. Right, and right. like well, I think that that's, right, there's right, something right. about that. Because right. even if not the best or polished script. Uh, the chances are the person may go to see something that is mediocre here, and then they get discouraged. Mm. It's, it not realizing that, you know, you're just building the experience. You know, you're not going to be blown away every time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, but you have to support the medium for it to provide yeah. you that opportunity. Because it's not like a film. The film is already codified the perfectness. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's no duo. There's no duo. I've been elected because I've tried to make the mayor's seat the people's seat. Because I know that we're all partners together. Politics does not enter into the arts in this city. The arts are going to be supported by this city. It doesn't make any difference who the president is or, or what party they're from. The groundbreaking for me today emphasizes the future of this city. What we're going to break ground today, on, I believe, is going to be the best performing arts district in this region and as good as anywhere that you're going to find. strong city and are always planning for the future. This new cultural facility will be a public asset for our children and our children's children, for our neighbors, for our students and visitors to our community. A lot of magic is about to happen. For decades to come, however, that kind of magic just doesn't happen by itself. It takes passion, perseverance, and patience. And with that, my friends, anything is possible. I have a new appreciation for the value of having a theater in your community. 
One of the surprising elements of enrichment was actually learning about the opportunity for kids plays in theater. So my son, who will be six pretty soon, um, he he loves to go to the theater. And uh, given that I, I I had never been to a play until I was in my twenties, uh, it's 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 really exciting to watch him grow up um, being invited and welcomed in a part of that space. Just the kind of creative energy that the theater brings, it exposes him to a creative outlet that I think he's been, you know, I think has been really great for him. And he, whenever we say, oh, we're going to the theater, he'll, he'll always ask, are we going to the movie theater or the real person theater? And I kind of like that, that, you know, when I say, well, hey, we're going to the theater, that, you know, he has that range already. It's like, oh, there's different types of theaters. What are we going to go see? The research out there shows that's, that people, students, from small children to adults, um, they learn concepts better when you when you add the arts in. You see a repeated um, kind of attack or discrediting or um, defunding of the arts and the humanities as kind of, you know, um, areas that are not professionally oriented or that don't um, create economies. One of the most vibrant economy in Northwest Arkansas is the arts. It challenges that idea that the arts aren't important and that the arts don't create opportunities and opportunities and spaces for healing that are very much needed at the moment. It's like the Henley poem. It says, I am the captain of my soul. The arts is the soul of this city, and the soul of this city as well.